Hello everyone, welcome to Classroom 2.0 Live for Saturday, April 18th. Today's topic is ThinLink. Our special guest today is Susan Oxnavod. Your show hosts are Peggy George, Lori Moffat, that's me, and Tammy Moore. Thanks to Tammy for doing the closed captioning for us each week. And I'm going to turn the microphone over to Paula Noggle, who will introduce Susan for us. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our awesome show on ThingLink with the ThingLink guru herself, Susan Oxnavide. I am so excited that Susan accepted um, my request to have to come on to the show and teach and share with us all the wonderful things and the ways that she uses this awesome tool. Um, I began using ThingLink about three years ago. Unfortunately, I haven't been using it as much as I should, but I'm excited to get back to it after this. Susan Oxnavod is the ThingLink Education Community Manager, as well as a tech coach in an elementary school in Chicagoland. She strives to build a powerful network of expert educators who share a passion for using tech to transform teaching and learning. Susan blogs about thoughtful ways to leverage the power of technology for teaching and learning on her own blog, Cool Tools for 21st Century Learners, as well as on the ThingLink blog. You can also follow Susan at, on Twitter at SOxnevad, S-O-X-N-E-V-A-D. Last summer, I took part in a um, teacher thing link challenge that Susan ran to help us learn even more about it. And I hope, I'm keeping my fingers crossed, that she's going to do something similar this year. So without further ado, I am so thrilled to present to you Susan Oxnavod, ThingLink Guru. Well, hello, everybody. Hi, Paula. Thank you. That was just such a wonderful introduction. I'm really, really excited to be here. I have one question um, for you guys. How do I make it so you can see me pointing on the screen? Susan, when you uh, use the pointer, it's the second tool down in the web tools. Pick one of those and then push down with the mouse. That will allow your pointer pointer to show up. Okay, so like this. Did you see it, see it there? Okay, well, anyway, um, why don't you guys get on to the newbie question that, or should I just go ahead and begin to answer it? Yeah, please go ahead and answer that for us. Okay, so the, the what is thing link is it's a great newbie question for me because um, that I have several slides that I want to share with you um, to explain what ThingLink is. But my only problem is, is that I'm a little bit of a novice to the Blackboard Collaborate and um, you all should know that I had some trouble signing on. I had to uninstall Java and reinstall it and I'm not that much of a technical guru. So I didn't get a chance to um, quite figure out how to advance the slides. Susan, that's at the very top. There's an arrow to the right next to where it says page 12. It's yes. on the left of that. Oh, That'll go forward. Very good. Very good. Thank you. Okay, so let me go ahead and try. Oh, good. Okay, so here's my title and let's begin. Okay, so I just wanted to start um, with a little bit about myself and then I'll go right into the newbie question. But I just thought it was would be um, kind of interesting for everybody to know what my background is and why I'm here today um, talking to you about ThingLink. So I'm a teacher and I'm a tech coach in an elementary school. I've been a tech coach for many, many, many years. And um, I also have a blog and I used to look for tools that I liked to use for teaching and learning, um, technology tools, and I came across ThingLink and I thought it was really wonderful and I started using it right away. It was 2011. And I just kept using it and using it and um, 
it started and I've watched it develop and um, I, was, I was able to give the company, they were always interested in feedback and what I thought would make it better. And then they decided they were going to make a classroom tool because there wasn't even an edu side before. And um, so they, you know, I, they still kept taking my suggestions. I started working with them more and more and started blogging for them. And then I eventually became the ThingLink EDU man community manager. So my experience with ThingLink is I loved it to start with and I've watched it develop and I've seen, you know, I've been able to provide feedback and I just think it's a really great tool. So if you hear me uh, sounding very passionate about ThingLink, that would be why. And um, hopefully you've had a chance to write down some of my contact information so that when you have uh, questions later on, you certainly should uh, feel free to contact me because I am the community manager and I love to build a really great network of teachers working in our ThingLink community. So what is ThingLink? That was the question. So, so I'm going to begin just by sharing uh, the basics of ThingLink, and then I'll show you how powerful the ThingLink platform can be. So with ThingLink, you start with an image. Uh, we also have a video tool, so you could also start with a video tool. And you upload it to ThingLink, and then you um, add these little tags, which we call icons, to media or links to anything that you want. So basically, you're annotating an image. You start with an image, and then you build it, and you describe it, and you define it through this media. So that's basically what ThingLink is. It's a very powerful platform for teachers and students, and it's very flexible because, of course, it goes across all content areas. You can do with this with science, social studies, whatever, or, or in your personal life as well. ThingLink has a lot of amazing uses. So that's what ThingLink is. Now, um, when you add these tags, like the one you see here, uh, if it is connected to, we, it's called a rich URL shortened tag, um, we are actually partnered with a lot of different companies. And you can actually create a link, and then the media pops up on the page. And that's really a beautiful thing about ThingLink. And you'll be seeing that all throughout this, uh, this presentation. But I just click here, and the media shows up. This could be a video. This could be audio. This could be an image on top of an image. So it's really a powerful tool for building an idea and a concept based on an image. And here's a list. There you go. Um, here's, a li oops. here's a list of um, all of the rich media tags that you can add to ThingLink when it will pop right up on the page. So of course, there's YouTube. There, oh, there's so many wonderful. There's SoundCloud. There's Audio Boom. There's Flickr, there's Twitter, and all of these wonderful, com wonderful uh, partners allow this thing link to be this beautiful image packed with power, and you can just put it in a small space. So that's what I love about thing link as well. And thing link is all about icons. Now, when I first created my first thing link back in 2011, there was just one black icon, and you couldn't even choose what icon you wanted to use. It was just black. And I thought it was powerful because you could just put a link to anything you wanted. And I loved the way you could put video in. I think that was one of the earlier features that used to pop up. So um, as time went by, you got more and more, we got more and more icons. And it started with this next set of five icons, and they were colored. And I thought that was really wonderful to be able to have the colored icons because that allowed us to differentiate. So you can see this is just an image that I created in uh, 2012. It was just about electing a president and explaining the Electoral College. But at that time, because I, um, we finally had these colored images, these colored icons, I felt like I could differentiate. And so I made a little key at the bottom of my image, beginner, intermediate, advanced. And so this helped kids select uh, content that was appropriate for their learning style right away. So I noticed at a uh, very early stage that ThingLink was great for differentiating. And really, all of these icons come with ThingLink free accounts, and you can use them and really do a lot of differentiating. But um, now there's EDU Premium. And with EDU Premium, not only are there many icons here that have just been designed for education, so you should see science and social studies and music, and we're bringing more and more in. Um, you can also create your own custom icons, and this is something I love to do. You can see down at the bottom right-hand corner of the screen, I'm um, 
these are some custom icons that I've made just to, to differentiate even more. You can just tell deeper stories as well. So someone can look at your image and right away see that this is easy text. What I'm trying to do here is to offer students leveled text, so easy, uh, moderate, and advanced. And so I made these custom icons so the students would know right away, oh, I should try this text over in the corner here. And there are also numbers so you can create a guided activity. And um, this just shows the students right away, oh, here's what I want to do. I want to watch the video. I want to play the interactive game. So there are so many more possibilities just with these premium icons. And I really love them. I make my own icons all the time. Uh, let's see what else. OK. All right, so I just wanted to mention also that ThingLink is cross-platform. And today, who knows what device you have in your particular school or classroom. You can honestly use ThingLink on whatever device is handy. It works very well on the web-based version. We also have a really awesome app. But if you don't have the app, it still works on um, the web browser on Safari through an iPad. So that's a really great thing, too. And everything is all connected. It also works on an the app allows you to work on an iPad or on a phone without wireless, which is really great for taking it outside. And I'm going to show you some examples of that. But um, it's also great for kids who don't have wireless at home. So you can use any device that's handy at the moment, and they're all connected. So let's say you use your phone out on a field trip. You, take, you start building a thing link, and you connect back to the wireless. Then this will then show up in your account. So you'll pick up everything on every device. It's all connected. And that's really a great feature of ThingLink that I love, but we do have an amazing app. And the app is really, really popular with students because it's just so easy. You can install the app. You can just take a picture and just tap and add it right on top of the image that you created on the ThingLink. You can do it right on the spot. And it's just really an amazing uh, tool that's just been developed. It's safe for students. Um, it's got a really great app rating. And it's been recently, we've added some features just to keep education in mind. So it's designed for students to be using on their mobile devices or on their phones. And then they can always go home and use their computers as well. So that's the app. And then um, you can share it across the web. So of course, this is great for teachers. And this is part of the EDU community building that um, I'm a big part of. We can all create thing links and share them on Twitter and Facebook and Google Plus or whatever network we have just by clicking on the image and we get a link to share or we can embed it on our blog or our teacher web page. And that's really great because if you make an image and other people embed it because they want to use your lesson as well, every time you update it, it gets updated for them too. So that's a good feature. You can also remix images. And I don't have a slide for that one. But you can take an image that somebody else has created, remix it, which makes a copy of it in your own, um, in your own list of images. And then you can keep the tags. You can add more. And you can delete them. So that's a great way to build an image as well, um, the remixing feature. And on the app, it's called Copy to Mine. And the last thing I want to share with you, uh, I believe, is the Google Drive integration. And this is something that I really wanted because I'm a big Google Docs fan. And I'm a big Google Docs user. Everyone in my school district has a Google Apps for Education account. And I know it's becoming more and more popular. So what you can do now with ThingLink is if you publish a Google Doc, then you can link it. And it shows up right on the page. It's one of those rich media tags that I talked about earlier. So this is a form. And if this was actually live, I would be able to click it here. And I'd be able to submit my form. Great way to collect answers from students. They don't get lost. This is a great use of an exit ticket. And of course, guided learning. I put uh, Google Slides presentations right on my thing link. Pops right up on the page so that uh, students have everything they need. And there'll be some demos of that in a little while. Actually, this project you see here will be a demo. So, and then there's ThingLink for Video. ThingLink for Video is a wonderful feature. It, it uh, comes with the free version, and it comes with our premium version as well. Um, premium users can upload their own video. Free users can use YouTube videos or Bright Code videos. And it's the same as ThingLink where you add a tag. So you play the video, you stop it, you add the tag. The tag can be a thing link. It can be a picture. It can be directions or questions or a web link or a website. So it's a way to customize video for instruction. There's so much out there on, on 
YouTube, and now the, the teacher can just set up their own little video lesson using ThingLink for video. And it's just right there, right on the page, right next to all the images. So if you haven't yet tried that and you do, you're one of those people who said you had a free account, I hope you will try ThingLink for video. Okay. And so I guess I'm going to start right now. Um, I'm wondering if there are any questions or is this a good time to stop and ask questions or should I just keep going and um, move forward? Because now I'm just going to share some examples of projects with you. Okay. Well, then I guess I'm just going to keep going. Oh, thank you, Peggy. I just saw that. All right. So um, lots of uses for ThingLink in the classroom. And one of the easiest ways to get started, if you're a teacher, you might want to just begin by creating your own ThingLink and create something easy, something that you already know about, just to get a feel for how easy the, to, uh, the tool actually is. Because with ThingLink, you basically tap on a ThingLink and then add the link to the page and change your icon. It just couldn't be simpler. And there is a video listed in the video resources in the live binder that shows you or students step by step how to actually make a thing link. But here is something that I was using with students uh, within the last few weeks. They were making pollution, pollution posters as part of a bigger project called Pollution Party. And so as I was working with students, I introduced them to this to thing link and I asked them to you know, pick some resources and make their poster. So they started out by just putting some links in. But then I talked to them all and I said, well, why did you choose that video? Because it's very easy to put a link in. And they said, oh, I don't know. And I said, well, the idea is, is that you're supposed to watch the video and then annotate it below. Share some highlights and do some clear and concise writing about, um, you know, about what you're trying to share. And that's a really good 21st century skill. We learn in schools to write long, long essays. But we know that a real world skill is being able to say something quickly, clearly, and concisely using great words. So that's what I'm working with my students on. And every time I go back in, this is one of their images, they're just doing a better job of explaining things. I love this one because we're learning, teaching them how to use labels and quick words. So here is something that the student learns by researching, by building this thing link. So they put the label in contaminated drinking water and then put this little fact in. So I think really it is a great way to teach reading and writing because you can read an image and it's just a good place for a teacher to start because you can do that in just a fairly a quick amount of time. Now I have a project that I want to share with you and it's called the Amazon Rainforest. And this is a project that I actually um, have done with students and have shared a lot of it in a lot of different places. But it'll illustrate a lot of the media that you can use in thing, use and you can integrate with thing like, and also the Google Docs. So this is sort of a complex project, but it wasn't hard for me to create because ThingLink is easy. You just have to have a lot of content. And this is for you to think about if you're just starting out with ThingLink, this is somewhere where you could go. Um, it's actually a destination for you. So I guess I'm going to have to ask right now how I actually get the tool to which I choose for sharing the app. I see the choice, uh, black, do I just choose the Blackboard Collaborate link? No, Susan, when you click on Start Sharing in the upper left, one of your choices okay. should be your browser. So click on that or your whole desktop. Okay, start sharing to application and to switch modes. Okay. Start so sharing. Okay. We're all up to the, it's further up and to the left of that big start sharing button. Okay, there it is. Okay, right, that's, what, that's where I am. Oh, share desktop, yes. Yeah, there you go. Okay. So, do you see my desktop now? Yes, it's coming up. Okay, great. And I'm going to go to the ecosystems project. And you let me know when you can see that. Oh, we see it. Sherry Edwards. Thank you. Hi, Sherry. Okay, so this is an Amazon Rainforest project. This is like I said, it's pretty complicated, but you can you can it's a good example of illustrating a lot of things that you can do with ThingLink. So first of all, as a teacher, 
when you're just starting out, you would want to create one for your students, some sort of an example, or I like to call it a content launcher. So here, as you can see, this is the one that I created. Now, we're going to forget about this stuff at the bottom. The stuff at the bottom is actually a guided student learning activity, and that's where I'm taking it a little farther. But just let me show you, first of all, a little bit of what ThingLink can do. So here, and I can show you how it works as well. So here I have a poll that I put on here. Here. And it's a live poll. It's a poll daddy. It's taking a while to show up, and probably because we're going all the way through Blackboard Collaborate. But um, it is answerable. So which living organism would you like to learn more about? And they can actually answer it. So that's sort of nice way to capture and make your activities interactive. And then I built this for students, and I want them to answer an essential question down here. How does energy move through an ecosystem? And so as you can see, this is a Google Doc that pops right up and embeds right on the page. I just take the link to the published Google Doc, and I place it in my thing link. And I'll show you what that looks like right here. So here's the link, if you can see it. And that's how I got that Google Doc in there, simple as can be. And then I just go ahead and save it. So I'm asking them a guiding question with the Google Doc, and they are going to explore the resources to answer it. And here, this is an example of differentiation again and using the EDU icons. Um, these icons are all available uh, and they've been created for you. So you can see here's a, a video. So if you want to know about the rainforest trees, you could actually play this video. And I made it in ThingLink for video. Um, so when we get to this part right up here, it should pop up. It might take a few minutes to show up, but a tag will show up. Okay, and I don't want to waste our precious time, but you know, a, a guided thing for video would be there. And then we have some audio here. Now I'm not sure if you're going to be able to hear this, but here's the Jaguar. I added an audio boom. So that's pretty nice, that media. Okay, and then I also have some links to articles. These are just Wikipedia articles. They take you, you click out here and you learn about these different things. Um, again, some more videos. So the students will go ahead and explore this to be able to answer my essential question about how did energy move through an ecosystem. And down here, if you want to look at this a little later, if you want to review this, the resources are in the live binder, um, you can see the actual thing we for video in process progress here. And then I'd have a little exit ticket. And I told you live Google Docs could show up in here. And as you can see, I can type my name in. I can make my choices, multiple choice. I can do a fill in the blank answer. And I can continue and eventually submit it to the teacher. So that's a nice way to do that as well. So that's the base image. And that's a nice way to use things like, but I took this a little further. This is actually my demonstration for the group project that I'm going to kick off. And it's students working in collaborative groups building a thing link. And I launched the project here with a Google slideshow. And it embeds right on the page. You can also visit it live if you go down to the bottom. And here you can see I have step-by-step -step directions for how you create this in a group. So students would actually assume different jobs. I like them to do that. And one student would be responsible for making the collage. And one student would be responsible for finding the, um, the videos. And they'd work together collaboratively following these step-by-step -step directions. It even tells them you know, how to make the circles on the collage and how to upload it to ThingLink and how to add their tags. And when they were all done, then they would have their own version that they'd worked collaboratively on of a different ecosystem or a different rainforest. And what we could do then after that is the, below every image, there's a link that says Add to Channel. And students can just click on it and Add to Channel. And it looks something like this. Now, this is a channel, not a channel of ecosystems. But in your classroom, you could have all the different ecosystems right here. And you can just pop that into your blog or your wiki or website. And you have a wonderful um, example of what students learned. Now, what I really like about this this project is that it's all about students learning as they're creating something. They don't study it ahead of time. This is how they begin. And actually, in this Google Slides presentation, you might notice that students are actually doing the research using this Google Slides tool. So it's a very nice 
manageable project for students where everybody gets to learn something and gets to explore and gets to create. So that's the Amazon Rainforest Project. And I uh, just wanted to share that with you again because I think it's a good example of something that you can do, um, you know, just a way that you can build. A lot of different pieces are there in that. So now I'm going to move on a little bit. I'm going to go back to this slideshow for just a minute. And as long as I'm sharing the screen, I think I can probably just stay here, I'm hoping. Uh, let's see. And I'm just going to share with you a little bit, invite you to, uh, as a way to get going, to show you some of the new things that we're doing with ThingLink and a project that I've launched very recently. Um, and I'd like to invite everybody here to collaborate because Classroom 2.0 is all about collaboration. So I have this project that's called Extend the Walls of the Classroom. And it actually only started last Monday, so we're just kicking it off right now. And it's a collaborative project using ThingLink um, designed on a very open-ended topic. It's called Living in the U.S. Bring the Textbook to Life. So it's really high interest level because it's the end of the school year right now. There's no pressure. You can do one or do each ch challenge each week, or you could have groups do the different challenges. Um, and it is high interest level for students, and it's a great way to get classrooms and schools on board with ThingLink if you're a tech coach out there like I am. I want to get everybody set up. And we have these district verified accounts now where you can get free accounts or premium accounts for everybody in your entire school just by using one invite code. So um, that's part of this. And I've got that information coming in just a little bit. But the whole idea of this thing in Creative Challenge is there are three phases to it. So first, students in classrooms are going to build things like images, like the ones I've been sharing with you. And I'll show that last week's example with you as well. And then we're going to turn those into ThingLink channels, and we're going to create interactive books on a topic. And then we're going to create, with that, I'm going to assemble things into a large reference book. I've actually created a ThingLink with a map that goes to every state. And so I'm going to pick these pieces apart and put them in a reference book so that the next time students have to do that 50 states report, they could actually learn from other students a real living textbook. So I think it's best if I sort of show you this um, because it's really an exciting project. So one of the questions that's going to be coming up a little later is what does a garden look like where you live? So as you can imagine, you can use the ThingLink app. You can go outdoors without wireless. You can take pictures of the garden, and then you can annotate it here and label it. Teach kids how to write those clear and concise um, you know, labels and clear and concise wording to describe things, which we talked about was a 21st century skill. Now, this is the one that I started this week. And we have actually four entries now, which I'm really excited about. It's the thing when it's challenge, and it is called Show Us Your School. And this one we just got this morning by H.G. Olson Elementary School. And they created this thing link, and they added some little tags to annotate their school and to highlight the really great parts of their um, school. And they're from Aransas, Texas. And they gave themselves the Carlo Kids is the actual uh, name of their group. So now I'm just going to go and show you that a little bit. That looks like this. So here are the challenges that have been submitted so far. These can be submitted at any time. I actually have my group, my tech club group, working on one for me. And we've got some, I've got a lesson plan for this, which has differentiated jobs. And it's all lined out and ready to go. So I'll make sure and share that with you. It is in the resources as well. Um, and part of this project that we're doing. So here is one from Wise Primary School. And you can see that they've, they're working on highlighting things like their special programs. And this is in Virginia. I asked everybody to put a tag on theirs so that we would be able to see where you are from. So this is what a school might look like in Wise, Virginia. And then we got this one. Wow, everybody loves this one. And um, just some different wings. Look at how big the land is. Here we have some baseball fields. And so this is what it's like to live. Let's see, where did I find this one? Um, I can't remember. There's a label here somewhere which will tell you where this school is from. Ooh, well, I'm just going to move forward. And if it's not there, then that's one of the things we're asking everybody to do is make sure you put a label on so we know where it's from. Because there's a lot of space here. My school doesn't look like this at all. And this is just a mock-up one that I made. Um, this was my if. This could be my school. And look, I would put a garden up here. So this is something that I use just to motivate students and to kick off the project as well. 
And this is the Olson Elementary School again. They show their library. And you can actually show some live performances or work that you're doing. So this is a very open-ended project that if you are loving ThingLink right now and you want to join us, we would, we would totally love it because, of course, this is only going to get better with more participation. Um, so that's what I wanted to share with you there, um, part of the project. Now, I'm trying to get back to the Blackboard page, and I think I'll give the screen back up. Let's see, here we are. Okay. Um, so now it's 12.40, and we have just a few more minutes. I guess I can share a few more of these slides with you. I think we want to stop at 12.45, make sure that we have enough room for some questions. Okay. So we're going to make these book channels. And then there's this big interactive image. So this is how to participate. And the important thing for you to know is to go to the thing like blog. Now, I noticed that Peggy put this in the live binder. It's uh, living in the United States, bring the textbook to life. Here are some directions. And if you click and you go to the ThingLink blog where I'm launching it, it's all going to happen on this one page on the ThingLink blog. You'll see questions of the week. I, I maybe want to go there because you'll see questions of the week and you'll see all kinds of um, helpful resources. And every time I post a new challenge, which will be um, every, uh, let's see. every time I post a new challenge on Monday, we will uh, put this image, include this interactive image. So as it updates, it'll always be in the post. So here's the interactive image. And uh, there will be a map here that will be all connected. Here's how you submit an image if you made one as a classroom. And let me show you what that looks like. We have a great Creative Challenges tool. And these are the images that were submitted. If you want to submit one, you just open that up right there and submit it. So we've really uh, streamlined the process of these creative challenges. I know Paula mentioned this earlier, that she did do the, the first creative challenge last summer for teachers. This is a creative classroom creative challenge for students. And then, yes, during the summer, we'll build on this and do a classroom creative challenge for teachers. But you can explore this. The question of the week would always be here. And this is where you could actually view that slideshow that I just shared with you. And then here are some other ideas for topics. And I'm going to put a form on there so classrooms can submit their own ideas for topics as well. This is a very open-ended project, like I said, high interest level for students because they love looking and seeing um, how live images of how things are the same and different in different regions of the US. So um, I think that is just a great project, and I hope you'll join us for that. And if you are a tech coach or a tech administrator, like I said, it's a great way to get your school districts on board. The only thing you would need to do is just send an uh, email to ThingLink. Let's see, I've got that up here. Oh, support at ThingLink.com and just request a district account. You can get a free one. You can get one link to get all of your teachers on board, and then the teachers share it with their students, and they get all the students on board. So that couldn't be simpler if you take advantage of that. And we're really excited about being able to bring that to you as well. So that is what I have for you today. And of course, I'm going to save a lot of room for questions. And I can certainly do some more demos if, um, if the situation, if you want to see something Great, more. Susan. But I'm yes, I did capture some for questions. questions. If anybody Let's has go any? back towards the beginning of your presentation. Um, I know this showed up on a slide about what kinds of videos you can add, but somebody asked, if I have a video clip I've created on TubeChop, can I put it into ThingLink? TubeChop I don't know of yet, but I'm going to honestly tell you that one of the things mm -hmm. that we do, one of the ways that we work mm -hmm. so hard okay. is just to try to integrate with all of those different so things. Sure. I actually just wrote it down. Okay, great. <laughs> um, but, okay, yeah. so let's go so back. I'm not sure, but this um, is really well with uh, YouTube. Can a thing link be embedded in a Google presentation. I know you went the other way, but can no. you put a thing link into a Google presentation? No, you can't. And that's only okay. because Google presentation does not support embedding. You can okay. embed thing link in anything that can be embedded. So a wiki, mm -hmm. uh, but no, not a Google presentation. OK. Works well in um, Edmodo, very, very well. You can embed it, it, you can embed it right live right in there. 
Great. Uh, someone wanted to see how to annotate a video in ThingLink. So maybe okay. you could demo that a little bit. OK, so I'm still screen sharing, I believe. No, you're actually showing the slides. Right. So I'm going to go back to my browser. And I've got one up there that I made that's kind of a nice thing for video. I'll just show you how to add a quick thing there. Let's see. I guess I'll just go back to my thing. So when you're in your ThingLink account here, then you will see your video. It says images and channels and things. And one of them says video. So here is what it's like. And then I'll show you. Here's what it would look like. Now, all of these yellow things are the tags. And these are where I put an annotation in. So for example, uh, let's see. I'm going to stop it. But you can see so then this picture and this opens up to another picture. So and yeah, we're not I don't seeing want to leave the thing our, link site, yeah. Susan. I'm sorry to oh, interrupt. Not. But no, oh, we are seeing? seeing parts of the slides that are in Google Docs. Oh, it says hosting is paused. So yeah, that's what. OK, you should be able to unpause yeah. it. OK. And there we a, go. A play button. Uh, OK, now can you see this? Something is changing. Yeah, I think it's catching up now. Yeah, I hadn't seen it either, Peggy. Yes, oh, I did. I, yes. Um, OK, yeah, cause, because I did that. Too. Yes, yeah, it's up. coming up. We're seeing plate tectonics now. OK. Oh, good. Plate tectonics. So this is one that I made. It's a very short video. I love plate tectonics. These are some of the tags. I use my custom icons here. And if I click up, I'll get, I'll come to something else. That wasn't the best one I've ever done. Let's see. So I can come to this website, this interactive website, and I can actually click to learn more. So that's how it works. Let me show you how you'd add one. I go to the bottom here under Edit. I click on that. So easy. And I uh, here I am. So I'm going to add a new tag. And I give the link to it. And I don't actually have one right now. But I put the link in. And then I put the text in, new tag. And you can change your icon here. You can change your style with colors or whatever. And I say save. Oh, I think I have to save. I have to have a URL. So OK, so I just added the Google. And then I could put more information here. But um, I'm not going to take the time to do that right now. That just took me to Google. But if there was reading on there, it would show up. So now I just added that tag. And we'll go back to edit and see what I did to it. I put the Google new tag here. And so I, that's how I would edit it. And it's going to show up as my second tag. So it's probably this one here. Yeah, there it is. So that's how you do it. And it's just that easy. OK. So are there any more questions? Yes, I did capture a few others. OK. Um, can students collaborate live on one thing link? Students can collaborate on a thing link. And there we have lots of tutorials and everything. And Peggy mm -hmm. did such a great job of putting together all my resources. Um, and we do have tutorials for that. You would, ha you would create a uh, group and then change the image permissions so that everybody could edit the images that were created in mm -hmm. that group. So absolutely can happen. Um, it's better probably if you want to do it, you just shoot me a quick email. Or you can look, I believe, on our help section. You should be able to find that. Or if it's not there, shoot me an email, and we should make one for the, one of those. Mm -hmm. How would you embed a thing link onto a web page or a, a blog? OK, so let me just go back to me. And when I click on me, I'll, you'll see all of my images. So let's say here was the map. Here's a preview of that map I was showing you. You look at it. You click the Share tag. And that's all in mm -hmm. the slideshow, too. You'll see this again if you ever get a chance to review it. I copy embed right here, and that's okay. my embed code. And I embed it right in. It's simple as Great. can be. Great. Can you import to OneNote? Can you put a thing link into OneNote? I don't know. Or Evernote? <laughs> I'm, not a, I'm not a OneNote or an Evernote user. But what we can do is, I mean, I can find that out. I really don't know. Mm -hmm. I apologize for that. OK. 
Do students need email accounts to use ThingLink? No, and there are lots of tutorials, and I know that Peggy put that in there on the page already. Um, we have tutorials. I have a playlist of tutorials on YouTube, um, mm -hmm. and I have several ThingLink ones. But the best, the easiest thing is if you have Google Apps for Education accounts, it couldn't be easier to sign up for ThingLink. You don't have to provide any information. Right. You just click on and it connects. If not, though, teachers can uh, sign students up. There's a way that teachers can actually generate usernames for students so that they can join for younger students. And the oh, tutorial okay. will walk you right through it. We have a great support desk as well. So, great. Um, this person is trying to remember something about the EDU Premium account. You can have thirty different groups and a thousand students. Is that correct? Uh, let's see. Ooh. Um, that is on our website and it's okay. right there. And I, yeah, I'm not sure what the numbers are. There are a lot. They're sufficient. <laughs> the EDU right. premium account is sufficient. But you know, better than that is actually the district level account because if you can get the district to get the account, everybody in the school, every student, every teacher in the whole in the whole district can have Singling Premium, and that's just easier than you know teachers going one by one with their right. individual accounts as well. Right. Does ThingLink's TOS allow for students under 13 to use the site? Yes, and our app is our app has been uh, Google Play has it down to three plus and okay. uh, nine plus on the App Store. So yes. Um, Someone saw a touch button. Is that marking a favorite or marking something in particular? Right. So when I touch, it's right up here. Then I touch this and then the person gets a little message under their settings that say somebody touched it. And then it shows up in my interesting stream. So that that was interesting to me and it shows up and other people can see see it. So it's it's a social thing. So you can see all of this these things going on. Okay. Um, when somebody has an account, how do they get to the teacher page? I'll go back to the slideshow. Peggy, they don't. Susan answered that. They don't need an email. OK, so let me go back here. So when you log in, you're going you, no, when you oh, OK. Yeah. You know, something very, very important. Mm -hmm. It's really important that teachers make sure they have a teacher account. In the corner here where mine says ThingLink Corporate, mm -hmm. yours would say ThingLink Teacher or ThingLink EDU Premium. And if it doesn't, then you need to follow our directions or just quickly send us an email so that we can give you a step-by-step -step guide to get it into a teacher account because that's how you get the students and all these wonderful features that we've developed just for teachers on our EDU side. So when you log in as a teacher, you'll first see Explore. Now these are things that I've okay. touched. Look, see? <laughs> and then you you click on Students. We want to see students. You click on Me to see your things right there. So there are all mm -hmm. of your images. And then from here we see videos, sure. channels, so if somebody people just I'm following. had so the it's, basic free account, um, it's a pretty visual. They would visual see the. Tool to the yeah, educational resource, right. the newer right. educational resources, correct? No, they wouldn't see students. And we have directions. If I try to explain it now, it's confusing, but we actually have a link that Rachel, our customer right. support person, has will send to you. And then you just click on that. And then you, when you sign in with your old account, it'll upgrade you to teacher. And we really want that to happen so we know who our teachers are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. OK. Are you hosting the Teacher Thing Link Challenge again this summer? Yes, absolutely. You know, this one is done. The the Student Creative Challenge will be done on June first, and by that mm -hmm. time, the new Teacher Creative Challenge will be launched, and it'll be connected to this. Um, there'll be some things. Definitely want to teach teachers how to make books, classroom books of content, because I think that's a great thing. And even you know, across the district, you know, just to create uh, classroom 
interactive resources. I mean, we should be sharing those. So that's one sure. of the things. But I'll start people from the beginning. It, actually, mm -hmm. if you can see the screen now, what I always start with is designing your digital self, where you mm -hmm. take an avatar and you, you do that with students and with teachers. So I'm really looking forward to that. Great. Great. I think those were the questions that I managed to capture. Great. Uh, likely, Eileen, yes, I'll ask that. There is a cost for the premium account, correct? Yeah, there is a cost for the premium mm -hmm. account. Um, it's pretty low. It's um, I have a discount code too. It's um, thirty nine dollars per year for a teacher. We also have, like I said, the district level account. And right now, um, if districts purchase, you know, consider include that in their purchasing for next year, they can get an. Uh, Premium account for the whole school for the whole district all the way through the end of next August. So it would, you know, you could it's like a jump start on it. You can start mm -hmm. now using it and then use it all the way through next year. And the reason I'm mentioning is that is that, is that the price is likely going to go up. So we're just right. hope um, if you like this and you collaborate with people, you at least look into the verified free account and then your tech administrator um, can work on looking into you know the premium account as well. Right. Okay, again, those were the, the questions I saw. We're going to go Great. ahead and stop your app sharing. Great. So that we can close out the show. Great. Well, thank you so much, everybody. Um, I hope this uh, provided you with enough different types of resources to see, explore the powerful and power up your pedagogy with ThingLink. Um, it's a very, very powerful tool and easy to use and I hope that this will encourage you to, to play and create something fun for a start and maybe uh, join our classroom challenge because I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Terrific. Glenn, are you raising your hand for a question or? Maybe not. All right. I'm going to turn over the mic to Peggy to introduce the upcoming so the upcoming shows. Well, thank you so much, Susan. That was amazing. And I am so excited by all of the things you can do with ThingLink. And I know that we're going to have lots of people signing up and checking things out for themselves and their students. So thank you. We are excited about our upcoming shows. Want to just do a quick rundown and hope that you'll plan to join us. Next Saturday, we will not have a show because that is the all day free spring virtual conference for discovery education. So we're all planning to go to that. May 2nd, the amazing Lisa, Lisa Parisi, global educator, bar none, will be our featured teacher. Can't wait to have her on the show. May 9th, we're going to have Chris Giles with us presenting Google Chrome extensions. So you'll get an opportunity to learn all about those, maybe some new ones that you haven't discovered yet. May 16th, we have a terrific high school student presenting for us on ways to create movies for your students. Her name is Sydney Sharon, and we're really looking forward to that. On May 23rd, we won't have a show. That is Memorial Day weekend in the United States. And then May 30th, many of you probably remember Latia Cooper. We call her Tia. Um, she's been on our show before. She's going to do an awesome presentation on ways you can find web tools, websites, and apps for science. And we haven't focused on science in a while, so really looking forward to that. So thank you all for joining us today. And I'll let Lori close this out, and we'll get this recording published as soon as possible. Great. Here is the page for the Discovery Education Spring VertCon, that's next week. That's why we're not having a show. Uh, Paula's posted the link as well. 
So here's the DEN conference link for next week. Steve Hargadon has gathered together all of his PD resources in one place at the Learning Revolution Project, including, including I'm sorry, the Host Your Own Webinar series. Uh, if you host your own Blackboard Collaborate session and make it public, you can have the room, the use of the room for free. You can also nominate a featured teacher at this form, which is in the Live Binder. The Classroom 2.0 Live resources are always in the Live Binder for the month, as well as the information for each of the month's guests. Also in that live binder is the Classroom 2.0 Live survey. So you can get the survey from the direct link or the link in the chat box or in the live binder. So there's three places to get this. Uh, when you complete the survey, at the bottom of the page, you'll see the professional development certificate request that you can make. And in recent months, now your name actually prints out on the certificate. Uh, this is the direct link again for the uh, survey. The certificate fields are at the bottom of the survey itself. Uh, please, though, include a personal email address rather than a school email address for these. The Recordings are also available on iTunes U in both a video collection and an audio collection, as well as an RSS feed. So there are many different ways to get to the recordings for past shows. Again, special thanks to Susan Oxnavod. Our special guest today to Steve Hargadon, the founder of Classroom 2.0, Teacher 2.0, Future of Education, and the Learning Revolution, to Weebly.com for providing our website, to Blackboard Collaborate for our webinar platform, and to everyone who participated in the show today, thank you so much for coming.